So now uh, let's start uh, our uh, material, which is structural analysis. So now let's uh, uh, ask ourselves uh, the first question, which is what is a structural analysis? So the definition of structural analysis is actually to determine the distribution of forces and deformations within a given structure that is subjected to a particular set of externally applied forces or, or deformations. So let's um, give an example for this complex definition. So let's have um, a bridge. So you can see this bridge in any of the parks around us, for example, Gallup Park or any of the parks uh, that uh, crosses um, Huron River or any other uh, lake or river. So actually to design this bridge, we need to do first structural analysis. So we have to model the bridge put the applied loads and deformations on the bridge, and then see the distribution of the forces and the deformations of this bridge and see if this bridge can handle these loads or not. So this is an example of the distribution of the vertical displacement of the bridge in color codes. So as you can see here, we have the maximum uh, deformation in the middle of the bridge. Uh, so here comes the next question, which is why do we need structural analysis? So actually we need structural analysis in many situations. The first situation is actually to de determine the design forces for members. So let's say we have a building that we want to design. So first we have to do structural analysis and see the members, uh, the, the forces on the members, and then design the members to uh, handle these forces. Another situation that we need structural analysis in is actually to analyze existing structures. So let's say that we have a building in downtown that is 100 years old and we want to see if this uh, structure is safe or unsafe. So first we need to build a structural model of the building, apply the loads, do the structural analysis get the distribution of the loads and the deformations of the building uh, or the members uh, in the building and see if these members are safe or unsafe. Another option is actually to evaluate a proposed design. So let's say that you are uh, a team leader in a construction firm and there is an engineer that is submitting a design to you. So you want to revise this design and make sure that it's okay. So you need to do structural analysis and then see if this design is okay or not. Uh, the last uh, situation uh, that we need structural analysis in is actually for dynamic analysis. So if we have a building that is subjected to a wind loads or earthquakes or waves, sea waves or any other dynamic load, we need to do dynamic structural analysis to make sure that this building will be safe during these dynamic loads. So let's have a very basic example for just one slab, one bay, one story building. So this is um, a, a building with just one slab, four beams and four columns. So first, this is the slab. So the slab is actually uh, the plate that we move on. So the, the, the plate or the slab takes uh, our load and distribute it on the beams on the edges. So this is the beams that supports the slab. Then the beams transfer the loads to the columns and then the columns transfer it to the footings and then the footings transfer it to the ground. So let's say that we want to design the beam. So we need to do structural analysis for the beam first. So the first step to do structural analysis is actually to simplify the beam. So we are going to simplify the beam for just one line. And since the beam transferred the load to the columns, then the columns represent the support to the beam. So as you can see here, we have two columns at the end of the beam. So we have two supports at the end of the beam that represent the column. 
then the effect of the slab on the beam comes as the distributed load on the beam. So as you can see here, the slab is distributed over the uh, beam. So this beam is called simply supported beam because it's just one bay uh, beam that uh, is supported on two supports at its ends. And let's say that we have uh, the length of the beam equal to L, then we want to get the distribution of the forces throughout the beam. So two important forces uh, 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 that we need uh, to calculate here. The first one is called shear force diagram and the second one is a bending moment diagram. So as you may have seen before or you are going to see throughout the course that the shear force diagram for this simple beam will be just a straight line going from WL over 2 in positive to WL over 2 in negative. And the bending moment diagram will be just a parabola with a maximum value of WL square over 8 in the middle. So actually what we need to do is to use SAP to do all of these calculations to, for, for us. So we want to give SAP this input and get these two outputs from